Hey YouTube, it's Element Productions and welcome back to another video. And in today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the HP EliteBook Revolve 810 G3. This was HP's answer to Microsoft's fledgling Windows 8.1 in an attempt to make it easier for users to navigate. Let's go ahead and start off with the form factor and I.O. This is an 11 inch ultrabook and it does match those dimensions rather well with a very stylish sort of metal looking design despite it being plastic on many parts. We'll go ahead and start off with the I.O. which is mostly centralized on the back of the machine. Starting off with an Ethernet port, USB 3.0, Kensington lock, display port, another USB 3.0 with charging functionality, and a power port. On the sides of these computers, there aren't much to talk about. There is a fan exhaust port and one of the speaker grills. On the front of the machine, there are no indicator lights. Instead, it is on the right side where we have this DS style slider switch, as well as an airplane mode toggle, very loose volume buttons, and underneath here, another speaker port and a micro SD card slot, which I find very handy, especially for users migrating files off of Android and whatnot. We have also a audio in, out port, and a docking station connector. Underneath the computer, we have an easily removable battery with the flip of the switch, and also relatively simple access to the memory and Wi-Fi card underneath these screws. Removing this cover to get you a better look grants you access to an expandable RAM slot of which four gigabytes of DDR3 memory is already soldered onto the board. So you could stick, according to HP, another eight gigabyte module in here, bringing the computer to a maximum of 12 gigabytes of RAM. Over here is our M.2 2280 SSD. It's important to note that there are three different generations of the EliteBook Revolve. The second and third generation like this one use the 2280 M.2 SSD, but the first generation uses an M SATA SSD much like the one that I ordered by mistake when trying to put this machine together. That's about all there is to see of the inside of this computer, so we'll go ahead and put it together and take a closer look at the surface level. Opening up the Revolve, you can see that we have a very nicely laid out key arrangement with the exception of the arrow keys on this keyboard. The trackpad is short and wide, but surprisingly usable with a beautiful multi-touch glass finish. The keyboard travel is surprisingly good considering how small of a machine this is, extenuating beautifully to the edges of the machine. And what's even cooler about them is that they're backlit. The display on this machine, despite coming from Chunky Bezel City, is surprisingly bright, coming in at 350 nits. Because it's a tablet, HP also implemented their wide-angle viewing technology, giving it a really good look from whichever angle you're looking at. The display resolution comes in at 1366 by 768 aka barely better than 720p HD, but it looks good on the 11-inch screen. It really does, and it makes up for that fact. Specifications for this computer include the Intel Core i5-5200U and the standard 4GB of RAM. These machines were also available with an i7-5600U. And the graphics coming from a computer as thin as this, we have integrated 5500 HD graphics. So all of this begs the question, what exactly can you do with this computer that you can't do with other machines? Well, of course, we have our rotatable screen that folds down to reveal our tablet mode. This machine also has an accelerometer inside, meaning you can easily change your display orientation with a simple tilt which also means you can play tablet games on this. And if you need to bring up the keyboard, you can tap that button at the bottom of the screen and you have a widely usable touchscreen keyboard. This is also where those volume buttons come in handy because you don't have access to the keyboard. You can simply push them on the side. You can also draw professional photographs in Microsoft Paint made even better with the optional HP stylus that they sold alongside these computers. One disadvantage of this computer is how loud and shrill the fan gets, which it understandably has to do for a computer this small. And finally, one other thing of note, we have ourselves a 4G SIM slot here for cellular connectivity, which really completes the whole portability package. One other really cool detail about this machine is the ability to use the HP Ultra Slim docking station, 
And if you know anything about these, they are not hard to find at all. You can usually buy these around six or seven bucks a pop. You'll find them everywhere. And you can slip your notebook right in to the chamber. And voila, all of a sudden you have the IO of a desktop replacement, including another Kensington lock port, HP's proprietary docking locker, as well as VGA, Ethernet, DisplayPort, four more USB 3.0 ports, one of which charges devices when it's off, a plug, and line in and line out. So that's just about it for this video, but that begs the question, should you buy one of these machines? If you can find it for the right price, I would definitely recommend it. I know a lot of people who would kill to have a tablet running Windows 10 that can convert into a normal looking laptop at a moment's notice. And the thing about these machines is that all the new ones are also being marketed as premium machines and they're selling as such. These computers cost in the thousand dollar range when they were new and finding one of these for 10% of the original price with nearly 100% of the functionality is a game changer. Now, of course, even the latest generations of these are running Broadwell processors, but that doesn't hinder you from doing the majority of your daily tasks, especially ones that would require a tablet interface. And with the available pin and docking station, you are looking at a fully fledged lifestyle machine. So with that, we're going to end the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Go ahead and leave a comment below if you've had one of these or you're interested in one and you have questions about it. I'd be more than happy to answer it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Peace.